Well, hey there, idiots. Welcome back to Observe. In today's video, we're going to be looking at Nicole Kessinger, who is Chris Watts's mistress. But today's a little bit more special because I'm also being joined by my friend and co-creator over on the Mind Reader podcast, Jordan Accardo, with his channel, The Art of Deduction. So we're going to go ahead and say hi to him and dive right directly into this video. Hey everybody, for those of you who don't know me, I am Jordan Ricardo. As Logan said, I run the channel The Art of Deduction, and Logan and I also have a podcast called Mind Reader. If you guys want to check that out, I'm very excited to uh, get into this read and very honored to be here on Logan's channel, so thank you all for having me. We're not going to go ahead and dive too much into the backstory because we kind of like our monetization status on YouTube and backstories don't do well in true crime things. So if you'd like to be able to know the full backstory as to what's going on, you can watch the Chris Watts video because I already took the hit on that demonetization. So there's all the story into that. Yeah, that's more or less all that we've got for that. Let's go ahead and start into the read. Does that sound good? Yep, let's do it. All right, let's rock and roll. So it's, when you go through the text messages, Tammy and probably Stacy will be there. Okay. So you guys know each other. Okay. Um, or if they reach out to you, you know that they're not the media. Yeah. <laughs> Can you guys yeah. give me your cards? Yeah. Really, really, I got grab you one. Okay. I just, Thank and now you. with this new phone, it's like I got so many numbers that I, I'm sure I can figure out who they are. I need to just deal with that. Like if you guys can help me get all of my cards. Yeah. No doubt. Okay. Are you good in here for a bit? Okay. Do you have some water or anything? Please. Okay. Okay. For those of you watching, this is the segment that Jordan and I are looking at the nonverbal baseline as to where Nicole is without really having any pressures. But Jordan, I'll go ahead and let you talk about what you see. I'll feed off of that. We'll just go around. Yeah, absolutely. So what I saw in that, first of all, was that if we're treating this as her nonverbal baseline, right? So this is the part of the interview where she's not super stressed she's not being pressured with hard questions they're literally just like figuring out logistics of like okay how do we get this information off of your phones like we're chatting about how shitty iphones are yada 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 which i disagree with um but <laughs> that's neither here nor there so like in that respect so like we're seeing her she's leaning forward first of all uh she's resting her elbow on the table she's kind of putting her head in her hand like that and for some people that is a sign of stress, right? From that position, you can like self-soothe by touching your face, running your fingers through your hair. There's a lot of ability for someone to self-soothe from that position. And it also like encloses you as well. So it's a closed sort of gesture there. But in this case, I really don't think that it's due to stress. The relaxed nature of the, the, the muscles in her arm that are actually propping up her head. So like you see it, it's relaxed, not tense. And if she was stressed, you would see more tension in those supporting muscles. It's almost reminiscent of someone who's bored while they're at class, right? In this particular situation, her stress levels are a little bit heightened, but any deviation from that positive or negative is going to be a tell for us in that regard. But yeah. So what do you think? All of those are really, really good points. I think on the leaning forward side of things, one, it's semi necessitated by the fact that they're working with the phones on the table. So that's understandable as well. But then also it is, as you can see, semi mirroring the other person's posture in the deal. So it's a very relaxed state and which is why, yes, you're right. There are stressors that are there, but this is the least stressed that I think the conversation can get. Along with that, something that I did take a lot of notice with is the tone and pitch of her voice. It comes across as very natural. It's just a conversational tone, yeah. conversational pitch. There's no strain on it. All the way around, I feel like this is a solid idea as to where Nicole's uh, nonverbal baseline lies. It's obviously somewhat flawed because it takes a long, it takes a long time to establish a really actually accurate baseline. But this one's pretty accurate, and I think it's about as accurate as we can possibly get. So your phone this time, do you have any objections to us looking at everything in your phone? Why do you even need that? I'm just curious. Like, why do you need everything as opposed to stuff? So we, well, because it's easier to get it. And we, if we're looking at all the material, let's say I take everything off your phone, 
I can put a date in. I'm sorry, I've got to pause it. There's too much that's going on already. <laughs> People keep telling me not to say sorry for pausing it. That's part of the job. But still, already, just right off the bat, her pitch, her tone changes when she asks about why they need all the information on the phone. Now, this can't. This certainly can mean nothing at all. But the fact that it happens on a point where it could be a privacy thing or she could be hiding something, as it turns out, she had deleted a lot of stuff from yeah. Chris already off of her phone. So the fact that she's showing nerves or signs, possible signs of nerves around this section already is suspicious to me. Along with that, she takes a swig of water, which it's a swig of water, right? That usually is an indicator of a dry mouth. And then also leans back, putting space between her and the person who's doing the interview or interrogation. And so all of this combined is just, it serves as a red flag for me. It doesn't. So did that prompt all the phone calls of people going, no, are you okay? They were prompting me. Right. That is why I did that because I didn't even want to like say that, but I was getting all sorts of texts from people that were like, media is trying to contact me. I don't know what to do. I didn't tell them that I was a witness. I didn't tell them anything about that. It was just like, just say no comment. I need you to do this. Okay. And then a couple of my like super, super close friends, I asked them if they would be courteous enough to take all the pictures that we had of each other off Facebook and social media. And they said yes. And that was like a couple of really close friends. Is there any text messages between you and friends that reference anything that would be concerning regarding this case? No. Like talking about Chris? I think you've told me that you've never even really talked with my friends about him no and like my friend's dad died last night like yesterday i'm not worried about that no i know but she started like oh my god she was really drunk last night she started like freaking out she's like i don't know what's going on in your life she's like i don't know if it pertains to this case and she like just sent me like a screenshot of a news article of i'm gonna go ahead and pause it just because i find it interesting that she so quickly shifted the question uh, he asked, did you text anything that could be incriminating, blah, blah, blah. And she says no, but then dives off into this other story. It could be nothing. It absolutely could be literally nothing at all. But the fact that it happens at once again, a point that would be a hot point or considered a hot point, she quickly tries to divert away with a story. And it you does tie what? in. It does tie in. This whole end. interview to me feels like a fucking roller coaster. You know what I mean? It's just like yeah. she's one second, like, leaning back, super stressed, you know, like, blah, 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 moving a lot. And then, like, the next second she's, you know, talking about, oh, yeah, my friend's dad just died, you know, like, in in the kind of tone of voice that I would expect. Out of Conversation about him having kids, how did that go? I mean, I don't know, I just told her, she, uh, Is it still, kids, did you delete that or is it still? No, I don't. I, I have no reason to delete anything else on my phone. Okay. The only reason I deleted all this stuff with Chris was because he was making me feel really uncomfortable and I didn't want to see it in my phone. Um, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna gonna go ahead and pause and talk about a couple things and I'm sure you saw them as well. This is a pretty important area of this entire interview. It's talking about the kids, which is one of the things that Nicole didn't really want kids.